Hey everyone, it is Sarah and today I'm going to show you eight places you cannot miss here in Staten Island. In this video, I'll share eight places you can't miss in Staten Island. However, there is a lot to talk about here. So if you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. When I ask visitors to name the five boroughs, the most commonly forgotten one is Staten Island. It's the city's least visited and least populated borough, but it shouldn't be. I went to college here and was surprised when I learned that most New Yorkers hate on this borough without even visiting it. The reality is that Staten Island has more to offer than some of the more popular boroughs. It's truly a hidden gem with fascinating finds unlike any other part of New York City. Staten Island is also known as the Borough of Parks because it has the most beautiful natural landscapes and ocean views of all of New York City. So today I'm thrilled to share with you eight places you cannot miss in the borough that I called home for four years. I am here at the southernmost point of New York State. Yes, that's right. This is called Conference House Park. And this is 265 acres of parkland. The house behind me is nicknamed the Conference House because it was the location of the only peace conference during the American Revolution on September 11th in 1776. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Edward Rutledge all met here with Lord Howe at his request to discuss halting the American Revolution. Now, that did not end up happening, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, we would be owned by the British today, right? Sorry about that, guys. We got our freedom. This house was built actually in 1680. It was built for Christopher Billup, and uh, they actually do tours inside of this house and they have a lot of different cool activities that go on here as well. They do afternoon teas in the spring and the fall, which sounds really fabulous. But all year round, Conference House Park has beautiful hiking trails right along the waterfront. So we're gonna go do some of those right now. It's stunning views of the ocean and the shore, Sandy Hook area in particular, and they also have biking trails. So if you like biking, this is a great place to come. So I think we should go check it out. A very historic place and great for sightseeing. So let's go do it. Man, this is so beautiful. This is one of the trails. It's just right along the beach and the, the beach stretches all the way along Conference House Park. So we're just gonna keep walking along this way and it's just stunning views. You have like birds, you have peaceful water sounds. It's, I can't even believe right now that like I'm in New York City. This is New York City. <laughs> I found a very exclusive piece of furniture that you can buy in a Brooklyn store for like at least $500. This stool here is custom designed. It is made windswept and sea salted. You can get it on my site at sarahfunky.com backslash bench. I'm at the southernmost part of Conference House Park and there is unobstructed ocean. All the way that way is Spain and Portugal and parts of Africa. So if we just go straight, we'll be back in Spain or Portugal or Morocco, most likely. <laughs> Don't you miss traveling? <laughs> I sure do. Definitely come here during sunset if you can. Like, that is the time. at a local hotspot. This spot is called Royal Crown Bakery and Cucina. It's an Italian bakery, that's what you need to know. And when I put in my request to all of you lovely viewers saying I'm doing a Staten Island guide, this spot was recommended more than any other place. So I'm very excited to try it. They're known for their fresh, delicious Italian baked goods and sandwiches. All of their bread is baked fresh every day and they also are known for their mozzarella. So we're gonna go inside and order a sandwich and some baked goods. Let's eat, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so I ordered the chicken cutlet sandwich with um, mozzarella, which they're famous for. It also has roasted peppers inside. It comes with this delicious balsamic vinaigrette. That is some thick, balsamic vinaigrette right there. Look at that. This sandwich was $13. Um, Louie and I are splitting it. As you can see, Louie's already gotten involved here. So you can share it, six dollars $6 each. Pretty good deal. Mm. This sandwich is so simple, but so flavorful. 
I love the roasted pepper in there. It has that really nice roasted pepper taste. It's like super yummy and it complements the breaded chicken that's fried with that nice mozzarella. Also, you can't miss this balsamic vinaigrette. It has like a bite to it, but it's sweet, which really complements the sandwich completely, uh, really nicely. I don't, you know, I don't really have much to say about it besides it's delicious and I'm gonna eat it and they're not lying about this bread. Fresh baked, don't miss it. It is time for dessert, woo, woo. Yep, yeah, that's right. Best time of all the meals. We have two things here. I have their rainbow cookie which was recommended, and their cannoli, which has been half eaten by Louis, because we do these videos in Spanish, if you speak Spanish. You can watch his Spanish version below if you wanna see that. Classic Italian dessert. I'm not sure about this, but I think that the colors represent the Italian flag. If that's correct, please let me know in the comments below. What I love about this is that, and I know people hate this word, but it's like super moist. <laughs> Like it's really juicy, uh, it's not dry. I hate when cakes are dry and things like that. Um, also has a nice almond extract flavor, really good. Let's do the cannoli now. <laughs> and this one is nice because it has more cinnamon flavor than other cannolis that I've had before. Um, I think I like it better this way. The exterior is really crispy, the interior is nice and soft exactly what you want in a cannoli. Definitely recommend both of these. You guys weren't lying. Royal Crown Bakery is legit. So thank you so much for suggesting it. I appreciate that. I'm here at Fort Wadsworth. This is a national park. Yes, a national park. And this is one of the oldest military institutions in the nation. And it was actually very modern during its time. This was built right after the Revolutionary War. When the British first invaded New York because we wanted freedom, they came through the New York Bay. Now the Atlantic Ocean is right out this way, and so it was very easy to attack New York. And that's exactly what happened. They came here to Staten Island and took over, and they were here from 1776 to 1783 when they finally gave up. After that, we were like, yeah, you guys are not coming back here, and they haven't since, and no one's invaded New York since 1783 but that's mainly because of this fortress and the fortresses that were built to protect the city. This is the Narrows area right here. The Narrows is a passageway, you can see it right in here, and this goes right to New York. So by building this fortress, we were able to protect New York, which was the most important city in the United States, the largest population, the federal government made 90% of its revenues just from tariffs passing through the Narrows. So this fortress helped protect the city. Now, an interesting fact about this fortress is that it was never actually used in war. So there was never any shots fired besides training shots. So it's very well preserved. They also have a museum here. Check out all this uh, historical information. They have tons of little stands with even more historical information on there. You also get a really great view of the Verrazano Bridge and the New York City skyline. And fun fact about the Verrazano Bridge that a lot of people don't know about. So the Verrazano Bridge was named after Giovanni Verrazano. He was an Italian immigrant sailing for the French and he came here in search of land, he came here in search of gold because that's what they're all searching for But at the time. And he was actually the first person to land in this area and so that's why the Verrazano Bridge was named after him. So Giovanni Verrazano landed here in 1524 and you may be thinking, whoa, that was a long time ago. You're right because he was actually one of the first Europeans to land here. But fun little fact, it's not so fun actually, it's kind of depressing. So after he landed here, he went down to the Caribbean to search for gold and treasures and all of that stuff that people would search back then. And unfortunately, he landed on a beautiful island, went on the island and was eaten by cannibals. It's a dark story, but that's the reality of Giovanni Verrazano. So next time you cross over the Verrazano, just remind yourself of that, or don't, you know, if you're not morbid like me. Really cool park to visit, make sure you check it out. And of course, we're here in January, so it's not the most beautiful day, but normally it would be lush and green and stunning. If 
you want to travel back in time, then you need to come here to historic Richmond town. This is an authentic 1600s, 1700s, 1800s little village where people used to live. It's also a historic landmark and it's cool. They have a lot of stuff going on here. We're going to try some of them. Right now they have a candle uh, making workshop and then we're going to do a little tour. Now normally they have a museum open. You can go inside all of these cool old authentic houses and they have reenactments they have people dressed in costume and cool stuff like that but of course mm -mm -mm, who's ruining the party right COVID but you know we're still gonna have a good time so let's go check it out and uh, learn a little bit about the history of Staten Island and the first settlers here which were the Dutch it's gonna be a fun day so one of the activities they offer here is candle making, but there are tons of different workshops. Check the website. Right now, I'm doing a candle making workshop. We're doing it like they used to do back in the day until electricity became popular, essentially. So all you do is you have like a little stick with a wick and then you hold the wick and just put it in this hot wax. Boom like that we're doing this in the old courthouse so this courthouse was built in 1837 you can actually see behind me it looks like that's where the judge would sit i imagine yeah look at that very cool atmosphere to do candle dipping i feel like i'm going back in time <laughs> i made some candles i want to show you them this is how we make sure that they're drying i am a professional i'm gonna make one more but this is what people used to do you know, people had so much time on their hands. They would just hand dip candles. Honestly, good activity during quarantine. I mean, it's better than watching Netflix every night, which I unfortunately do. My candles came out so beautiful and I told Louie he was putting too much wax on it and so did the teacher. And guess what happened? The whole thing fell to the ground. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Look at this. So sad. This is why you listen to the teacher. Right, Louie? Hope you learned your lesson. So one of the cool things you can also do here is get a tour of the area and go inside different houses. We're inside a general store right now. Fun fact, or not even fun, it's like a terrifying fact. Uh, this, this whole area is known to be like haunted. It was on Travel Channel's show, like most terrifying locations or something. And I just look up and I see this terrifying like mannequin with no eyes and i'm pretty sure this is i see what they're getting at here and as someone who's terrified of ghosts i think it's time to go <laughs> I'm here at La Ruana. This is an authentic Sri Lankan restaurant here in Staten Island. The cooking here is done by Jayantha, which this is her name. I apologize, I cannot pronounce it for the life of me. I don't want to mess it up on camera for you. But she learned all of her cooking from her mother in Sri Lanka. So this is truly an authentic Sri Lankan experience. And along the walls, they have Sri Lankan art. And inside Jayantha, she moved to the United States and married another Sri Lankan expatriate. And together they opened New York's first Sri Lankan restaurant. When they first opened, it was literally just a little picnic table under an umbrella. Uh, in Times Square in 1995, which if you're aware of what Times Square was like in 1995, filled with X-rated everything. And eventually they kind of, you know, moved up. And today they have this lovely location here in Staten Island. I just ordered a few things. I got their ginger tea, which I'll pour a little bit for Lou. Look at that, wow. Look at this cute little teapot too. Normally on weekends they have a buffet and um, the entire interior is beautifully designed. Everything is from Sri Lanka, so you really feel like you've traveled to Sri Lanka when you're here. So this is Mulligatani soup. Mulligatani soup is a traditional Sri Lankan soup, and it's like neon green. I've never seen a soup quite so neon. Ooh, that's nice. So this soup has a really nice spice flavor. It's kind of like curry or cardamom, um, definitely a yogurt base. The waiter has told me why it is so green. It's because of curry leaves. I did not see that one coming. Served on it. Actual plate. This is called lampreys and this is a dish that's over 300 years old. Eggplant, moju, cashew nut curry, and egg all wrapped and baked in a banana leaf. I am so bad at pronunciation. My apologies again. What, bro? 
Um, this reminds me of a tamale, you know, because Louis Guatemalan, so we're always having tamales. So Louis chose the pork. You can get this in a variety of different meats, beef, chicken, vegetable. I mean, comes in tons of different options. That looks delicious. See that? Bro. That is so good. It's like sweet, yet spicy and savory. The curry flavor is so good, so rich, perfect for winter heating us up. La Ruana, you're doing a good job, keep it up. Another cool thing about this spot is that they have the only Sri Lankan museum outside of Sri Lanka. They started in the basement. It was actually started by the daughter of the two um, owners, and now it's moved across the street. Right now it's closed because of COVID, but they will reopen. They do virtual tours. I'm here at a neighborhood staple, Danino's Pizzeria and Tavern. This was recommended from you guys, the locals on Staten Island that I had to visit here. Since 1937, they've been in business. They're known for their thin crust pizza that looks like this. Oh, oh my God. Louis already got involved, as you can see, because we do the Spanish version of these videos. We got two types of pizza here, two of their most popular orders. So I did their clam pizza on one half and their garbage pizza on the other half. The garbage pie has sausage, meatball, pepperoni, mushroom, and onions. And the clam pie has fresh garlic, parsley, and olive oil with a sprinkle of grated cheese. Now this spot was opened by Carlos Danino in 1937, but he actually introduced the pizzas in 1951. It's a no frills spot. They have a nice bar inside with a bunch of local beers. So if you're into that, you're definitely gonna love this. I'm gonna try the clam pie. I've actually never had clam pie. I've always wanted to try it. So look at that, nice thin crust. That's great. So this has a really nice garlic flavor to it and the clams are like very potent. Like if you like uh, like clam chowder, or any type of clam dish, you're gonna really love this. Plus the, the crust is like perfectly crispy. This is more the style of pizza that I normally order. I like to get like a lot of sauce on there. Look at this, this is so heavy. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's a little messy, but totally worth it. The marinara sauce complements the mushrooms and the onions and the pepperoni and their meatballs are epic. I definitely think I prefer the garbage pizza over the clam pie, but that's just my taste. On point, this spot is delish. Thank you so much for those that recommended it. <laughs> One of the most amazing parks here in Staten Island is Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanical Gardens but there's so much more than just a cultural center and a botanical garden. They actually have 17 different gardens here, in addition to wetlands, park space, museums, music halls, concert spaces. I could go on and on and on and on and on. There's so much here. The interesting thing about this spot though is in the 18th century, it was a resting home for sailors and they've completely converted it into the beautiful space that it is today. So we're gonna go and explore it. But as you can see, there's a lot going on here. They also have several different museums and galleries. So they have the Staten Island Museum, the Newhouse Center for Contemporary Art. They have a children's museum. They have an art lab. They also have like a very photogenic area that we're gonna check out here. And then thanks to all of you guys that put in suggestions for things to do in Staten Island, I was told about the Chinese Scholar Garden. So we're gonna check that out too, because apparently it's like absolutely amazing. So let's go explore this botanical space. Also, interesting fun fact for you, six of Snug Harbor's original landmarks were the first designated landmarks for the New York City Landmark Commission. So they have buildings here that uh, were built as early as 1833. Very historic place. Let's go see it. You guys, all I gotta say is COVID 1000 Sarah zero because I just failed again. The Chinese Scholar Garden is closed because of COVID or maybe because we're here on a day that they're not open. I'm not sure. This was built in 1998 by Chinese artisans. It was actually the first Chinese Scholar Garden in North America 
everything inside of here is from China. The garden is an exquisite example of a private classical garden developed in the city of Suzu during the Ming Dynasty between 1368 and 1644. So the whole purpose of these gardens in China was for government officials to be able to escape the stress in their government life and retreat to these gardens in a peaceful, harmonious refuge, which is what I would like to experience right now, but I can't go inside. <laughs> it's really unique. I mean, you really don't see that type of architecture anywhere in New York. So it's cool to be able to kind of like explore the Chinese culture here in Staten Island. So this is really interesting. I've never heard of a sensory garden, but this is called the Lion Sensory Garden. And it says that it is an accessible garden that features therapeutic horticulture for people with mobility impairment or cognitive disabilities. So that you can literally go out and touch different plants and or waterfalls or smell flowers. We're here in January, so not exactly the time for flowers to bloom, but take a look at this weird tree right here. This is a very sensory tree. I, like, I feel like it's gonna hurt me. I don't know. Ow! Yeah, that hurts. What is this tree? It's so weird. This one's called a leather leaf. It feels like leather. That's so weird. Did you guys know about plants like this? This is all news to me. Would you be surprised if I told you that there is a Himalayan mountain monastery here in Staten Island? My guess is probably you would be. Well, here at the Jacques Marche Museum of Tibetan Art, you can experience that firsthand. This was commissioned by Jacques Marche in 1945. She loved Tibet and built this house and museum to resemble a Himalayan mountain monastery. In her journal, she wrote that her first exposure to anything Tibetan was a collection of bronze figurines passed down in her family from her great grandfather, who was a merchant active in the tea trade. The collection consists of over 1,000 art, ritual, and cultural objects from Tibet and the large Himalayan region, China, and Mongolia, and they date from between the 12th and the 20th century. It really feels like I'm traveling being here, which is so lovely because I'm, I love traveling and I haven't been able to do it a lot. And just seeing like the beautiful Tibetan flags and, and you can just walk around these grounds. They actually do Tai Chi over here. They're having a Tai Chi class right now, so I can't show you that side, but there's like a lot of Buddhist statues. It's also on a hill, so there's a little pond. I mean, it's so, so peaceful. All is supposed to represent a Himalayan mountain monastery. And she actually lived here, by the way. So this isn't just a museum. She originally did live here. And then when she died, um, it was converted to a museum. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, watch my other guides on Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, and I'll see you next time. Bye.